Welcome to the Latinx Kid Lit Festival and our wonderful panel on Alebrijes. We're so excited to have you here in the first ever of its kind. Yay! <laughs> so my name is Carla Arenas Valenti. I am so happy to be hosting this panel. I am a author of the Marie Curie and the Power of Persistence book, which is part of the My Super Science Heroes series with Sourcebook. If you like science, if you like superheroes, check out the book. Um, I'm here with three wonderful illustrators who I will let introduce themselves and we'll start with Anna. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I'm very excited to draw with all of you. Uh, my name is Anna Aranda. I am an author and illustrator. Um, you can find some of my work uh, here in this book, The Chupacara y the Candelabra, which I illustrated. Uh, it's really fun. You can also see it in Our Celebración, uh, very colorful books. And uh, I have another book coming out next year that you can pre-order called uh, Moth and Butterfly. Ta-da! Uh, thank you for joining us. and. Uh, We'll go to you, Paulina. Yes, hi everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for connecting. I'm very excited to draw whatever you request. Um, yeah, I have a, a few of my books here. Oh, here. Um, Toto y el Secreto and Ni un Pelo de Tonto. So I'm excited to, to paint and draw with you. And if you guys want to draw along don't forget to tag us and yeah hi everyone thank you so much for joining us we're really happy to be here with everyone and i'm really happy to be here with my fellow illustrators and writers um i'm tania de regil i'm from mexico city and these are some of my books. This one is the first book I published in Mexico, Sebastián y la Isla Tut. And then this is another book that I wrote and illustrated called A New Home. And yeah, I'm very excited to be here with everyone and can't wait to start. So our illustrators are going to get started on their first alebrije while I talk to you a little bit. The first thing I want to say is to have everybody please check the chat box for the anti-harassment policy. That's really, really, really important. The second thing is please participate, send us comments, chat with us, send questions. The illustrators would love to hear from you, any questions. The third thing, this is very important, family friendly, please let's make sure that the chat box is child and family friendly. So ask anything you want, but let's keep it clean. Um, so moving on, this panel is about alebrijes. And maybe some of you know what alebrijes are, maybe some of you don't. So I am going to tell you a little story about alebrijes while our illustrators begin their artwork. Once upon a time, there was a man named Pedro Linares. And Pedro Linares was an artisan. He did sculptures with paper mache. And I'm sure many of you have done paper mache sculptures before. Um, so you might be familiar with what he did. But Pedro fell ill, really, really, really sick. And he was so sick that he was coming in and out of consciousness. And in his moments of unconsciousness, he fell into a dream. And this dream was about a forest, a fantastic forest that he went into. And in this forest, he saw the most unusual creatures. He'd never seen anything like this. There were there was a donkey that had butterfly wings and, and a lion with an eagle head and a rooster with bullhorns. And these animals were floating around the forest and they were all saying, alebrijes, alebrijes, alebrijes. And he didn't know what that meant. But when he woke up and he recovered, he thought, I have to start making these, these fantastic creatures. So being the artisan that he was, he began making alebrijes out of paper mache. And his artwork was so beautiful and amazing and different and original and unique that it caught the attention of some very famous artists like Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo that you maybe have already heard about. All of this attention went and became known as the alebrijes. 
And some artisans eventually in the state of Oaxaca, which is in Mexico, they found out about alebrijes as well. And these artisans, they actually did work with wood, with a really unique, very lovely kind of wood called copal. And this wood has magical properties, or so they claim. And so they began to make alebrijes with this wood. And now, if you go to Mexico, you'll see alebrijes, these beautiful, intricate structures that are made of this wood, and they're elaborately painted, and they're fantastic creatures. They combine dragons with, with porcupine spikes or, or rabbits with wings. Um, we, um, we're, we're showing you a little bit of what the alebrijes um, look like right now with the illustrations, but you can see they're very elaborate, they're very detailed, and some of you may actually even recognize Alebrijes from the movie Coco. So for those of you who've seen Coco, when he goes into the spirit world and there are all these creatures that are floating around, those are inspired by the Alebrijes. So as our artists draw, I'm going to start with um, Ana. And can you tell us a little bit about what you're drawing and what's your inspiration here? Um, so I am drawing a uh, Xolosquinkle, that is uh, a dog originally from Mexico. Uh, and I'm uh, mixing it with an ajolote, that is this amphibian, uh, that's so cute. And uh, the third animal that I'm mixing it with is a quetzal, which has very long wings. And in the end, it has like very long uh, feathers as well. And all of those animals are very traditional in Mexico, right? We actually had an, an axolotl. We had one and they're really, really, really cute. They're called the, the dragons of the sea, I think, right? Or the dragons, the water dragons. So, okay. Oh, I, I was gonna say something. Yeah, uh, they're, they're from, uh, from Mexico and there's, I think there's even a museum in Xochimilco, right? Yep. They're, they're from Xochimilco, actually. That's that's lovely. Okay, let's move on. Um, Paulina, what about you? What are you drawing? See, I'm drawing a ladybug, uh, but it's mixed with a monkey and a duck, and it has flowers on top. <laughs> so, yeah, crazy. And what are you using? So I think some of you are using markers and some of you are using pinceles. So what? tell us what you're using. I'm, right now I'm using acrylics, um, yeah, just acrylics, but I have here my oil pastel, so I might incorporate something with oil pastel, like more flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to Tania. What are you doing over there? Uh, so I'm drawing a spider monkey, um, which you can find in the south of Mexico, and um, I recently saw one in Mira Cenote, and they're quite scary <laughs> because they're very, very naughty. Uh, but um, I'm mixing it with, with the tail of a quetzal. The quetzal has really beautiful tail, which ends like in two tails. And then I'm giving it like um, jaguar print. <laughs> and I'm also giving him a little bit of uh, crocodile spikes and tiny wings. So I, what I love about Alebrijes is that the, the thing is you have to have fun with it and you can create whatever you want and, you know, um, just cover it however you want. And that's what's so fun about Alebrijes. It's that it's just your pure imagination. No mistakes, right? Because it can be whatever you want. It can exactly. be flowers, it can be different crazy creatures. Um, so you actually mentioned something, actually two things. Paulina had mentioned this earlier. So any friends who are watching this, if you want to draw your alebrijes, go ahead and do it. Pick three animals or pick plants or pick things that inspire you and see how you can combine them in, in unique and original ways. Um, and then I have a question for any one of the three of you that would like to answer this, but since you're combining different traits of your alebrijes, do they also have different personality traits? So for instance, Tania, you mentioned how the spider monkeys are really mischievous, right? So how does that, how does your alebrijes character come to life if you've got these three different components? Um, well, I think, yeah, that's also a nice thing about Alebrijes, you can mix personalities. So I think mine is a little bit naughty. 
<laughs> because monkeys can be very naughty in them, but he's also a little bit brave because he has a lot of um, jaguar in him. <laughs> and, and But he's also kind of magical because we, he can fly while he's jumping around the tree. So um, that's Maya Lebrije. It's actually inspired by a character I had created a long time ago. I just dressed him up as an alebrije right now. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, I think we have I, we have three minutes to finish up these drawings, but I'm gonna keep talking to you. So it's a test of your multitasking. Um, Anna, I have a question for you. Did you always know you wanted to be an illustrator? So as you're doing your, here you are in this amazing panel at the Kid Lit Festival. Is this where you thought you would be when you were a little kid? Um, I think so. I, I wanted to be, I always wanted to paint, but I also always wanted to sing. Um, and I wanted to be a musician too. So I think uh, when I paint, I always sing and make music. So in a way I'm doing both, but I like that uh, I'm able to share my work and uh, that it's accessible to everyone, which is why I, I decided to become an illustrator because you can get art in a book and you can get it for free at a library uh, and you can have it and enjoy it. <laughs> so, and actually that's a good, a good point. Where, where do you find your, your inspiration? You said you get art from, from books and from other places. What are some good places that you have found inspiration? I, I like going to like shows and looking at art online, but I also think that a lot of inspiration comes from moments of being uh, quiet and being peaceful like I don't know if that happens to some of you like you go to sleep and then you find that all these ideas come to you but I think that's because we're in a peaceful state so I think uh, trying to be calm and uh, enjoying things also makes you have a lot of ideas or at least that's yeah. what I feel. <laughs> well or like Pedro Linares right you're dreaming and you wake up and you have these ideas that inspired you from your dream Yeah. Um, right? So I think we have a, a couple questions from the audience. So why don't we get one question from the audience and then maybe we will move into a prompt after that. All right. How many years have you each been drawing? And this came from Grace in fourth grade. Thank you, Grace. That's an excellent question. And we'll start with Paulina. Hi, Grace, thank you. Yeah, since I was a little kid, so a long time ago. <laughs> what about you, Tania? How long have you been drawing? Um, I think, yeah, since I was a little girl, I think all illustrators, we love to draw, so we, we start drawing very young. And you never so stop, right? You never stop, so if you like to draw and you want to become an illustrator, just draw every day and don't worry about anything and draw, draw, draw. <laughs> All right, Anna, what about you? Yeah, same here. Since I was very little and since I can remember, I've been drawing with whatever I have in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you guys are drawing some amazing stuff. So why don't you show us what you've drawn? And I don't know if you have a name for your character. Um, will Paulina, yeah, you go first. See, um, and maybe the audience can help me name my ladybug. Um, she's mischievous as well, and she's really happy. <laughs> All right, so we'll put that out to the audience. What is Paulina's ladybug named? And then in the meantime, Tanya, why don't you show us what you have? Um, okay, so uh, this is a character, as I said, that I originally created a long time ago for a story. And his name is Elliot. And I actually chose this character because the story I wrote for him came from a dream. So it was all connected to the alebrijes and dreams. So it was a very crazy dream. And it was like, what happens when, what happens to the things we forget? Where do they go? <laughs> so that's a great story. That's, that's, a, that's, he's from that story. So this is Elliot. <laughs> great. What about, um, Anna, what about you? What's your, um, your drawing? Hola. <laughs> Hola. Yeah, it's a, I think mine is like a curious character because it can go, it can fly and then swim and then run. So 
I think uh, we need a name for a curious character that wants to see everything, hear everything. So Jennifer suggests for the ladybug, Lunita Chiquita. What do you think? That's a great I name. Think, All right, we need a name for Anna's character now. So why don't you go ahead and put that in the chat? And in the meantime, we will take a prompt. So illustrators, are you ready? You will have two minutes to draw a new alebrije based on a prompt from one of our friends in the audience. Sí. There you go. So thank you, Miss Dines ESL class over in Boston for this prompt. Un unicornio, a unicorn. Ready? Go. So friends, I hope you're also drawing a unicorn and then you can imagine and think about what else you're gonna put into your unicorn as our illustrators get going. Penny, that's a good name, Anna. Somebody suggested Penny for your alebrije. That's perfect, that's so cute. All right, so here's another test of your multitasking. Um, can you guys share some of your favorite artists or illustrators? Paulina, I'll start with you. See, sí, I like um, Claire Wendling. She's French. She's amazing. She draws really beautiful. Uh, Manu Arenas, he's Spanish. Um, who else? Well, really, Tania, Anna, Kirsten. <laughs> um, yeah, my friends from school, I really, really appreciate and enjoy their art. So it inspires me. Awesome. What about you, Tanya? Okay, so for me, my all-time favorite illustrator is Quentin Blake. Yeah. He's the illustrator for all Roald Dahl books. And I just love his like messiness, but it's just so full of life. And when I was a little girl, I always used to look at his drawings and be like, oh, I can do that too. So that's what I love about him. And right now I love so many illustrators, as Paulina said, my friends, and I just get inspired all the time by many new illustrators. Yeah. Anna? I am a big fan of uh, Sean Tan. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite uh, illustrator and I just love everything he does, but I'm also a big fan of uh, oh. Beatriz Alemania and um, Tom Junger, Claude Ponty, I think, and friends too. Uh, I love what you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies, time is up. So how far did we get? Let's see. Paulina, you have an unicornio and what's the other inspiration that you have going on there? Oh gosh, it's just like a um, unicorn with pink stripes. Like a zebra, <laughs> like a pink zebra unicorn. <laughs> unicorn yes exactly <laughs> Tanya what about you um so I only had time to draw the unicorn part <laughs> but I was able to give him um, or her a uh, very colorful hair so <laughs> it's like a unicorn rainbow maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> or unicorn ice cream sprinkles yes <laughs> I like that <laughs> Anna what about you um, mine is a flying unicorn. I wish I had more time to add more color, but it's also like it flies, but it's also getting places with really cute shoes. With its shoes, I know. They're perfect shoes for the unicorn. All unicorns should have shoes, I think. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys ready for another prompt? Yes? All right, let's have another prompt. Un lagarto, a lizard. And again, thank you, Miss Dines. You, you pro um, brought us so many excellent prompts. Friends, if you're watching, if you're ready, go ahead and draw a lizard and start adding all of your alebrije components to it. Now, for the illustrators, as you're drawing, are you, are you thinking of a character or are you, are you just thinking of the shapes? What, are, what is going through your mind as you're going through these drawings? Pauline, I saw you shaking your head, so I'm going to ask you first again. <laughs> yeah, I always think about character, but then shape as well. And I, yeah, just hoping I don't mess up. <laughs> Such a short, you know, time. Yeah, okay. 
So Tanya or Anna, if one of you has a thought, are you thinking character or just shapes or what? Um, for me, since we have so little time, I'm thinking shapes yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then thinking what I can add to, to it to make it a character. Okay. <laughs> All right, Anna. Yeah, same here. I'm thinking, um, yeah, what are the shapes and what's the story of this lizard and uh, where does it live and uh, what can live in all of those scales? <laughs> well, and it's interesting when you're doing an alebrije because all of these all of these shapes serve a different purpose, right? So wings lift our creatures and, and flippers would move them through water. So how it changes the shape of the animal, right? If they're gonna have wings, that's gonna impact how they move around the world. If they're gonna have shoes, that impacts how they're gonna move around the world. And so if you think of like the movie Coco and how they they captured all of these alebrijes and, and gave them all these, these very different personalities just based on the different components, um, I think that's that's a really difficult task for an illustrator to to have to come up with all of that um, on the spot so quickly. So Anna, are you using paints as well or markers? No, I'm using markers. Yeah. But it's I like the very colorful ones. <laughs> yep. Tiempo. <laughs> Two minutes is not a long time, is it? All right, let's see, what do you have? Tanya, I'll go with you first. What do you have on yours this time? Okay, so I made a crocodile with wings and I gave him a cholote, is the yeah. features, which is the tail and these little things that they have, which are very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. Okay, Anna, what about you? Mine, I... I was trying to do go for something here, but I wasn't able to finish. I was thinking we could have like trees or leaves or something coming out from it. Uh, Tanya, I love yours, and Paul, I love yours. <laughs> <laughs> Paulina, what is yours? I have no idea. It, it's something like, a, like how do you say the chameleon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a something weird. <laughs> uh, well, let's ask. Let's ask the audience, my friends watching this. What did Paulina draw? What is this? What is what is her character? What is what animal? What creature is this? And while we wait for you to answer those questions, maybe we can have. Um, we actually have a video question that came in, so maybe we can uh, hear that from Jeremy. Hi, this question is for Anna Aranda, and my question is: um, How were you begin? in the world of illustration. It, the question is how do you begin in the world of illustration um, of art? How do you how do you how did you get your start? Oh thank you for asking. Um, I well I started as a graphic designer and then I, I went to study illustration because I always loved painting and drawing and uh, I went to do that in France and I I had to catch up because people there were so, they were so talented that I already knew how to do a lot of stuff that I didn't. So I had to work very hard. Um, and then my first book was published because I didn't win a contest, but the person that was the judge of that contest uh, contacted me and say, hey, let's, let's do a book. So sometimes not winning is good <laughs> yeah, that's actually a great a great sort of story because we always think that winning is the best right but here it was it, it didn't even matter that you won it was what mattered was that you showed up and you you did you did your present your art or whatever you submitted something for the contest and that gave you your opportunity that's yeah. wonderful yeah thank you um okay so oh it's a butterfly a butterfly dragon lizard Paulina, that's what you did. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Yes. <laughs> All right, you ready for another prompt? Let's get it. El chupacabra. Ana, you're at an advantage here. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So for our friends, as our illustrators are drawing, you can see that the illustrators are using different um, the tools, right? So Paulina is still using her paintbrush and we've got markers from Tanya and Anna. And I bet if you at home, if you have crayons, if you have chalk, paper mache, obviously you can use wood, um, whatever inspires you here to, to work on your alebrijes. Oh, it looks like Anna is drawing a, a fox or maybe a lobo or maybe a chupacabra. Is that what she's doing, a chupacabra? <laughs> Um, so, Ana, as, as you're drawing your chupacabra, one of the questions that I wanted to ask as a follow-up was, um, what challenges did you have on your journey to becoming an illustrator? Um, I think it was mostly that I, I started drawing very late. Uh, I mostly uh, started painting when I was very young, but drawing wasn't like my best skill, so I had to really catch up and do that and also um, kind of be ready to show my work because in the beginning it feels very personal and you don't want to show it uh, but then having the courage to go for it and then show it to as many people no matter if they like it or not I think that was a big challenge of just saying you know this is what I do I'm gonna go out in the world and show people and having that uh, courage was really uh, really important for me to have like the confidence in doing more and then getting better Right, because I mean, you're obviously super talented, but I don't know, did you know that your whole life? Did you feel super talented from the beginning? No, yeah. not really. All three of you shook your head. So my guess is that's one of the really difficult things when you're an illustrator is that you love what you do, but you just, it's really hard, as you said, to find the courage. Yeah. Sample, my friends. <laughs> All right, so Tanya, show us yours, your alebrije, or your um, chupacabra, sorry. So my chupacabra kind of looks like a fox <laughs> because I think fox is like goats. <laughs> <laughs> so it has wings and these are supposed to be his, uh, his teeth, but they look more like whiskers. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure. I did a very good job here, but I love Anna's chupacabras. It's the best one. Right, give us your chupacabra. Bring it close up so we can see it. Awesome. All right, Anna, yeah, do you want to show us yours? Sorry, I, I didn't know if you were asking Tanya or me, but both I, of you, both of you, so we can see them close up. That's great. But something went wrong with the nose over here. <laughs> it's having a cold. <laughs> And Paulina, let's see your chupacabra. I, I don't know how to put this, it's really hard. <laughs> I, well, and I love how different the three of them are. It's, it's the same prompt, but it's completely different. Yeah. See. Sí. All right, so we have another student question for you. At what age did you first start drawing pictures? Jennifer, fourth grade, Bronx, New York. Excellent question. Tanya, let's start with you. Um, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, so as I think we said, since we were, well, since I was little, but then professionally, um, I actually studied fashion design. And like Anna, um, sometimes my teachers uh, told me like, oh, you're not good enough for drawing. Uh, you shouldn't, you should go back to Mexico. And it was very heartbroken for me. Yeah. Um, and I was crushed, but I, I loved illustrating. Um, so I just went for it and like professionally illustrating, maybe when I graduated from college. So it was like when I was 20, 21, I started to do this seriously. <laughs> okay. Paulina, Anna, what about your journey? Paulina? Yes, as we were talking, since I was a little girl, I would have my, my sketchbooks and I would just, you know, be away from everyone and start drawing. Um, but yeah, also professionally, I studied, I think when I was 23. So it was a little bit late for me, considering that there are kids that are 17 and, you know, start their careers. So yeah, professionally, 
2008 or 11 when I graduated. And it's been amazing. <laughs> and here you are, right? <laughs> All right, Anna, what about you? Uh, same year, I, I started drawing when I was very little and uh, I actually learned this not too long ago that my mom used to put like these very big sheets of paper in the walls when I was a kid so I could like draw on the walls. <laughs> That's a great so, idea. Yeah, I was very impressed when we went to see like murals and things like that in Mexico. So uh, that really resonated to me. And same here, I think I started a little bit later because I, I went to graphic design school and then I, I thought, no, I want to do books. And uh, so it was maybe like around you know, 2021 20, that I started like drawing more seriously or a little bit, yeah, around that time. Yeah, very similar timing for everybody. Yeah, and you all started at the beginning where all our friends watching on YouTube are encouraged to start and keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Um, and with that in mind, we have one more prompt for you. You ready? All right, un dragon. This is an excellent alebrije prompt. Thank you. Thank you to the Frederick Middle School for all of your amazing prompts. I hope you're watching and I hope that you're drawing as well and inspired by these alebrijes that we're seeing. So I'm going to give you a few minutes or a few seconds, I guess, to, to get going. And then I, will, um, I would love to hear from the three of you if your cultural background, um, you know, Mexico or any any familiar inspiration has has informed you as an illustrator? All right, Pauline, I'll start with you. Yes, well, uh, of course, Mexico, it's a huge, huge inspiration for me. Uh, you know, the culture, the colors growing up, I grew up in Coyoacán, which is close to Frida Kahlo's uh, yeah. house. My yeah, parents, cool. <laughs> yeah, and my parents would always bring us there, and my my parents also would bring us to the museums, which I that's one of my favorite uh, museums, uh, the Anthropo uh, Anthropology uh -huh. <laughs> Museum in Mexico City. It's one of my favorites. Uh, so yeah, Mexico, my culture, yeah. The the colors, <laughs> the colors, right, and the shapes, and yeah. yeah. See, we have a great imaginario. How do you mm -hmm. say like images and yeah, the alebrije, the Day of the Dead, sugar skulls, everything. Yeah. 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 Good. Anna, what about you? Yeah, I think um, mostly for me it's the colors because I. When I was a little bit younger, I like the first years of my life, I spent them in Cuernavaca. That's called the city of eternal springtime. Yep. And I remember seeing lots of colors and flowers. So that kept stayed with me. That's great. Tiempo, my friends. All right. So, Tanya, I never asked you the question. So why, why don't you show us your um, your dragon and then you can explain whether you were inspired by your cultural background or heritage uh so i drew a friendly dragon because it's full of flowers <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah i i'm also always inspired by my culture and mexico and i think that because i love it so much i want to share it with everyone you know when you go see a really good movie you really like, the first thing you want to do is go out and share it with everyone. Yeah. So that's how I feel about Mexico. I love it so much that I want to share it with every single person I meet. So, <laughs> so yeah, and then, well, this is maybe inspired by the beautiful flowers in Mexico. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's great. Uh, now, what does your dragon have on his head or her head? I, I'm not really sure. I thought it because it's flying, it's like the hair is very. The hair, yes. Like, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, I have like a really cute hair, and then uh, maybe it can be like speeding instead of speeding fire, it's uh, flowers because it's like a friendly dragon. Of <laughs> but course, of course. I feel like it looks like a monkey, but it's okay. It can be a dragon monkey. <laughs> exactly. It can be a dragon monkey, right. And Paulina, what do you have for us? 
Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, like, the Wizard of Oz, you know, the monkeys. I don't know. They're really strange. Oh, uh, yeah. They had, a, they had the wings, right? Yes. So I have these. It's more like, I don't know, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just this. It's, it's almost like a sea dragon, right? And it has little, little flippers. And I love the antennas. They're like ladybug antennas. I think you like your ladybugs, your Catarinas, right? Because your other, your other Alebrije also has all the spots. Yeah. I'm seeing a theme. <laughs> I was trying to go for a more Chinese type of dragon, but ended up with a more Mexican Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. So I think we have a couple more questions. Are you up for a few more questions, my friends? Yes. All right, let's get another question. When did you publish your first book? Are you the little girl on the cover of the book, A New Home? This is obviously for Tania. And are the homes in the book real places? Thank you from Ibrahim, third grade, Bronx, New York. We're so excited that you participated. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim. That was an excellent question. <laughs> so my first book came out, was this one. It came out in 2015. So I was 30 years old when I published my first book. And then your question about a new home, I love that question. Um, I think, yeah, it's a little bit me. <laughs> the story is inspired by something that happened to me. So I always tend to put myself in all the characters that I draw. So, so yeah, I think so. And then the homes, yes. They are real homes. So that is a great question. This, the New York one was quite easy to draw because New York is so easy to draw. It's so recognizable. And then for Mexico, that was very, very hard because- Can you show us, I'm sorry, can you bring it closer because the, the oh. artwork is so beautiful and I'd love okay. to bring it closer, yes. That one is Mexico, but it was so hard because Mexico has so many styles and so many different things. It's a bit chaotic. So I didn't know what to do that would really represent Mexico. So what I ended up doing was drawing my own apartment. <laughs> and if anyone said that doesn't look like Mexico, I would say it is Mexico because right. it's my apartment. <laughs> my home. <laughs> so that's what I ended up doing for a lot of things in Mexico because if, if they said that does not look like Mexico or that it's not the typical thing you see from Mexico, I would say, well, it is because it's where I live, it's what I do, it's what this person looks like this person. So yes, very much inspired by everything around me. <laughs> and I think that's an important point, and, and this is similar to what you have all said before about how just it, the, the alebrijes are so different and, and, you know, the Mexican culture is so different and all of our cultures are so different. There isn't one form or mold that, that you can say, yes, this is Mexico or this is a dragon or this is a lobo, right? And so that's what's so fun about alebrijes, but also about, you know, the different the different cultures and the different life experiences that we have. Um, okay, we have one more question, I think. So let's uh, let's get that one up. Um, okay, this is for Anna. Do you like different colors and flowers? It seems that you have a lot of vibrant colors um, in the cover of the Tupacabra e the Candelabra, which is totally true. Can you hold that up? Yeah, so we can all see it. And that was from Jennifer, fourth grade, Bronx, New York. Great question. Thank you, Jennifer. That's, I love this question because color is one of my favorite things. And uh, kind of what I, I started illustrating because I loved painting so much, but I wanted to tell stories. So I love doing, you know, floral things like this. You can see all these flowers and even the chupacabra has like, you know, kind of like the alebrijes, right? It has some like floral details inside. Um, so I, I really enjoyed those colors, but I, I just like colors that are very bright and like uh, for me it's, you know, every time you move to a different page, I want it to be a different color experience, right? So every time you turn, you're like, wow, there's new colors and then new things to discover every time, right? So, um, and then one thing that you, I wanted to show you that's a surprise in this book is that it actually has 
two covers. So it has this cover. That's so you, cool. you take it out, it has a second cover. So Jennifer, I recommend you to see if you can find the second one. <laughs> that is amazing. That's wonderful. So I, I have so many questions for you, but I think we have a bunch of questions from our YouTube friends. So I will have to ask you my questions later. Here's a good one from Liam Cohn. What inspires you guys? And it can be anything. What kinds of things inspire you? Yeah, animals, flowers, uh, other cultures, people. Tanya, what about you? Um, I'm always inspired by different emotions. I like to show the different, you know, I really like showing that in my characters. If they're sad, if they're happy, how do you, uh, how do you, you, you know, your body language says so much. Like, how do you stand when you're sad? Or what, how, do you, how do you jump when you're happy? So I'm really inspired by, by different emotions. <laughs> and Anna, do you have a, a, in something that inspires you? Well, I think also, you know, everyday life, uh, things that happen around me, people that are around me. But um, for me, I, a lot of it is uh, I have very vivid dreams. So sometimes I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, I have to draw that. Yeah. <laughs> or I wake up in the middle of the night, like, did that really happen? I just, I have like a little notebook next to me so I can like draw those things. That's a great idea. Yeah. I love that. Speaking of drawing, YouTube is asking for a panda. And, and specifically Hayden is asking for a panda. So let's give Hayden a panda, is that okay? Yay. All right, YouTube, I hope you're drawing a panda too. This was your request. So let's get some pandas going. And it can be any kind of panda. Look at how Paulina started her panda compared to how Anna started hers and how Tanya started hers. There's so many ways to draw a panda. I had no idea. And different materials too. I think Paulina, you're still using your acrylics or your paintbrush. Yeah. <laughs> Grace Quinn asks a great question for the three of you. How did you meet? I will tell you, Grace, how I met them. And it was through this wonderful Las Musas that I belong to. And I did not know them before. I'd heard about their work and I'd seen some of their work, but I did not know them personally. So that's how I met them. But how did the three of you meet? Paulina, how did you meet Tanya and Anna? So I was uh, studying in San Francisco. I was studying art uh, in San Francisco, California, and I was about to graduate. I think I had one year left. And then Anna came and to study her master's in children's books, or, or yeah, in children's books, right? And that's how we met, and we became like, like really, really great, great friends. And then Anna, I don't know how you met, Tanya, but I met Tanya through Anna. <laughs> so, so Anna, how did you meet Tanya? Uh, I met Tanya because we're represented by our same agent. We're in the same agency, Full Circle Literary. And, uh, and once I, I think I, I was staying a little bit in Mexico and I was like, I have to meet Tanya. I love her work. And then we went for a coffee and then I love Tanya. <laughs> and I love Tanya, of course. <laughs> Tiempo. And, and I just want to follow up on what you said, um, and I'm, I suspect you feel the same way, but for me, I am not so much a fangirl of celebrities. I am a huge fangirl of illustrators and authors. So anytime I meet one of my favorite illustrators or authors, I can't breathe, I'm shaking, I want to hug them. And, um, and I feel like it's just such a privilege to, to do that. So we have about five minutes left. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you drew. We'll start with Tanya since I didn't get to ask you the question before. Um, so I drew my panda and he's very cold, just Aww. like me. I'm very cold right now. So he's wearing a sweater. <laughs> Anna, what's, what about your panda? Uh, mine is a dancing panda. Yes, so, of course uh, it is. It needs to do the unicorn shoes. Oh, it's missing the dancing shoes, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> like a disco ball. <laughs> right, exactly. Paulina, what about yours? Yeah, he's like a fur ball. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to put a pattern inside, but had no time. <laughs> your ladybug dots, like your Katarina. Yeah. 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 See. All right, so YouTube, do you have any more questions as we get ready to wrap up? All right, who inspired you to draw? This came from Abrosina in fifth grade. Who wants to take this? I can say real quick. So my grandfather, my grandfather was the one who got me into drawing, and he would always make me, oh, let's just, you know, try to copy these, and he would help me, and he would give me art books, and and he was the one who got me into this. <laughs> Did he get? Is he still around? Is he able to see? No, that's really sad because uh, he died when I was twenty-two, and then I started. You know. Your career, yeah. yeah. But I'm pretty sure he's still he's it, watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do we have any more questions from our friends on YouTube? And in the meantime, um, oh, here we go. So, how did you guys learn how to draw at home or at school? That's a great question, Patricia. All right, Tanya. Um, I, I want to answer this because um, this shows how anyone can learn. Um, so I studied fashion design and then I decided to do illustration, but I didn't have the money to go to school again. <laughs> so I used everything I could find in the internet, books, uh, online classes, and that's how I learned how to illustrate children's books um, by myself. and through the internet. So use all of that because it's so, so helpful. Yeah. And, and I think we have a tendency to think that it's not something we can do on our own, but definitely something that you can do on your own. Yeah. Any more questions? Otherwise, I have a million questions. All right. I think we're probably going to wrap things up. So profoundly grateful to our three amazing illustrators for your time for sharing your artwork. This was super, super fun. If you loved their their work, maybe consider purchasing some of their books and supporting. I don't know if you all wanna hold up your books again so everybody can see what we have. Um, be sure to share the festival on social media, watch all of the other videos. We have so much fun stuff coming up on the festival, so please participate. We loved having everybody here, and we hope that you will continue to draw alebrijes from now for the rest of your life. And thank you, everybody. So thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Paulina. Thank you, Anna. And if Gracias. you guys want to wrap up by just drawing one of your alebrijes, we could, we could say goodbye that way. Thank you, Carla. You was an amazing panel. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Carla. And don't forget to buy Carla's books as well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So if you guys, why don't you, um, if you wanted to finish one of your other alebrijes or just uh, do whatever you wanted as we say goodbye, then that way they can, everybody can see you guys drawing um, your final alebrije for the day. You can finish your, your panda, Paulina. <laughs> Thank you for having us, Carla and the Latinx Kids the Book Festival too. Yeah. I'm so envious. You guys are so good. <laughs> Those look like feathers, Paulina. Yeah? <laughs> or flowers. Flowers, feathers. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone.